Hello, this is Edith Neumeyer and I have a new video and I'm not doing very good today. I have listened to too many lies today. <laughs> I guess too many people are presenting these lies and I have actually looked up some other things. This guy that is supposed to be leading us through this, whatever you want to call it, starting with an F. I was listening to him today and on an interview in mainstream media and I almost threw up because of his lies. That guy just lies and lies and lies. Constant. And then I saw something with our president calling people who are not vaccinated killers and I'm thinking whoa where are we at then i just continued to listen to some uh, preachers on youtube i just came across you know this uh, a preacher and i'm i don't want to mention his name because there's actually two people that i came across i hope i didn't do that but anyways uh, it came across and um talking about the Gog and Magog War. Now, I know I have done videos about that. But, people, there's still people out there that have not heard the message. And I'll tell you right now, I'm going to have to continue to make another video. So, yeah, if you already know about the Gog and Magog War, I guess you don't have to listen. But people, the reason why we are so deceived in all areas of our life, not just the spiritual one, but in politics as well. And we have been worldwide people, worldwide people are deceived, greatly, greatly deceived. Why are they so deceived? Because they have turned their back on God. That's what's happening today. They have turned their back on God. And so now they are being deceived. And they cannot even see how deceived they are. Okay? That's just bottom line. And I'm not going to uh, dance around these liars out there. There are so many liars out there. Okay, let's start with politics and then end up in what we call Christian church. There are so many false teachers out there. So many. And they don't seem to care about lying. Now, okay, maybe some of these pastors are, are maybe making you feel good. Because they're saying good things. Maybe they are even quoting the Bible and telling you scripture. But again, they are telling you only 80% the truth. Or maybe 90. And then they add 10%. Sure, I'm tired. 10% a lie. Okay? Sorry, I'm just yarning. I I think I had a I had a really rough day, but I wanted to make sure I can uh finish this uh video. Simply because I've come across now two times where people pastors are talking about this Gog and Magog war in Ezekiel Ezekiel, let me see. It's 38 and 39. Okay, 38 and 39. Now, Ezekiel 38 and 39 does not tell you when this war is happening. Now, this guy is saying, oh, well, we know that there is no temple. And so, therefore, it must happen before uh, the tribulation time. This is all nonsense. Why? Because he thinks there's going to be a temple. So, you know what we know? This person is clearly a Zionist, a Christian Zionist. Clearly. Okay? And how do I know that? 
because he is talking and he is, of course, uh, affected by dispensationalism. Very clear sign. Very clear sign. Because the Bible does not tell us one place that there is going to be a third temple. Okay? There's only, I believe, two places where you can, they can refer to when the Bible, the New Testament, talks about a temple. And that is in 2 Thessalonians 2, which the, the son of uh, the perdition or the, the man of sin sits in the temple. Okay? That is not talking about a physical temple. It talks about God's temple. Okay? God's temple, according to Paul, is the body of Christ. Okay? Now, please, we have to start with that. If people do not acknowledge that, that only the body of Christ is the temple, the true temple of God, which Messiah is building, and only Messiah can build the temple, even though Orthodox Jews agree with that, that only Messiah can build the temple. There's two places in the Old Testament that tells us this clearly. One a quote that God gave De um, David, and David didn't understand it. He said, a descendant of yours, and it's in Second Samuel someplace, a descendant of yours, if you give that in, put it in, will build the temple. And God didn't mean Solomon. He meant Messiah. And then there's another one in Zechariah, and I don't remember exactly where it is either, Zechariah 6, maybe, where it says the branch will build the temple. That's all referring to Messiah. Only Messiah can build the temple. The second temple was destroyed because the Old Testament or the Old uh, Covenant is over. And Jesus started the New Covenant, covenant. And when he started the New Covenant, he built the temple. He started to build the temple. And the true temple is the body of Christ, every believer, including Jesus. So we don't have to. Tootie footing around. And then another one is in um, uh, Revelation, let me see, Revelation 11. Okay, When John was told to measure the temple. Now, where was John? So yes, this temple that John saw and was supposed to measure was in heaven. It wasn't here on earth. Now, how do I know that? I'm not assuming it, people. I know it. Because at the end of the chapter, God tells you. Okay? I think it says the door of the temple was open. The door, and it even mentioned the door of the temple in heaven was opened. Now, why would be in the first uh, beginning of the chapter, the temple here is on earth, and then at the end, there's a temple in heaven? No, there's one temple, people. Okay? There's one temple. There's not going to be another temple of God here on this earth. Okay? There's not going to be. If there's going to be another Jewish temple, it's not the temple of God. Okay? Very obvious. Very obvious. Possible. Possible. But it's not going to be the temple of God. Okay? And if you cannot see that, well, I'm going to question whether you're really saved or not. You need to read it for yourself. Read the verses yourself. What does Paul say about the temple of God? Always, 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 it is the body of Christ. Okay, again, John, where did John see all the temples in Revelation? Every one of them, do a study of all the temples in Revelation. It is always in heaven. So, uh-oh, my light went. Oh, there it is again. It it was, uh, I guess we have some lightning here, thunder and lightning. But anyways, 
Where was I? Now I was kind of shocked. So anyways, yes, the temple of um, God will never be a temple. There's never going to be a, a physical temple of God here in this world. Jesus right now is building a temple. And when this guy believes, or whoever is making this video, we also know that he is not telling you the truth. Because there is lies and lies on top of lies. When you believe one lie, and you're not really looking at what the Bible says, and you're assuming things, which he did, oh, I'm assuming, then guess what? You will never see the truth. And on top of it, all these politicians that we're having today, telling you a bunch of lies after lies after lies, will also mislead you. Because they know, they know people have been misled by false teachers. All these Christians that call themselves Christians, okay, have been misled. They're not going to the Bible and reading and saying, oh, this is what the Bible says. Don't take my word for it. Go to the Bible and read, do a study on the temple for yourself. Don't listen to some false teacher, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Don't follow them, people. Okay? Do your own study. Look up these verses that I just told you. Look up every verse in, in Revelation that talks about the temple and tell me where that temple is every time that temple is in heaven. Okay? And he's talking about his temple. He's not talking about a physical temple. He's talking about the temple that Jesus is building in heaven right now. Okay? Who is that? Those are all believers. He is the, that's the new Jerusalem. Okay? That's the dwelling place of the people. And it's the temple of God. Why did, uh, um, why did Ezekiel not see the temple in Ezekiel 38 when Gog and Magog war came? Why? Because, see, the city, New Jerusalem, was the temple. And the people in it were the temple. Okay? Now, again, Ezekiel 38 and 39, Ezekiel does not pinpoint okay, where this war is going to happen. We can only pinpoint it through reading Revelation. Only Revelation will tell us when this war happens. And I'll tell you right now, no Jew, okay, no rabbi can tell you when this war will happen. They're all assuming, okay, they're all saying, oh, it's in Turkey, and that's when it was in those days. But Gog and Magog, in the future, will be all kings of the north, okay? And in the future, everything's going to be different. Now, Gog and Magog war, we can pinpoint. We don't have to guess when it will happen, okay? Just go to Revelation 20. That's all you have to do, okay? Go to Revelation 20, okay? Now, let's do that. Uh-oh, and my internet is down because it just went ploop. And maybe I don't even have internet. I'm going to connect it. Maybe it just disconnected. But go to Revelation 20. Okay? So connect it. Come on, let's go. There it is. Ah, good. Yeah, we have a thunderstorm out there. So you go to Revelation 20, and then you go at the end of the thousand-year reign, okay? In verse 7, it says, when the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, and to gather them for battle. In number, they are like the sand on the seashore. 
They march across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of God's people. Who is the camp of God's people? The city he loves. Who is that? That is New Jerusalem, which he is right now building for his people. Who are his people? His people are his bride. Okay? The bride of Christ. All people who accepted Jesus as their bridegroom, as their leader. That's what he is talking about. But fire came down from heaven and devoured them. Okay? This is when the Gog and Magog war is happening. And Ezekiel wrote about it in much more detail. And when you read that detail, it is very clear that the, that the people in that city lived safe for a long time, okay, in safety, which is not happening today, will never happen today until Jesus actually comes. Will the people in the new Jerusalem, not the old Jerusalem, Okay, we're not talking about the old Jerusalem. We're talking about new Jerusalem, which Messiah can only really create. Okay, remember we're seeing again then in uh, uh, Revelation uh, 21, uh, the new Jerusalem coming down. We see that in the Old Testament. I don't want to go into detail today. I have done videos about that. Okay, about the New Jerusalem and how it's predicted in the Old Testament, it's called Mount Zion. Okay, it is the city, the New Jerusalem that Jesus is building right now in heaven. And it will come down, adorned as a bride. A bride. It's not the bride because the bride lives in it. It's the city for the bride. Okay, and it will come down after the wrath of God. Here we're seeing in seven, the thousand years are over. Now the thousand years is the day of the Lord. Okay, that's the thousand years. Okay, one day with God is like a thousand years. Second Peter, I think it's second Peter two. Okay, so here we are already at the end of the thousand years. It says clearly, when the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison. He will go out and deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog. And that is the battle. And to go gather them for battle. Okay? And they're going, read again, Ezekiel 38, they're going against a country that has been sitting in uh, peace for a long time. They didn't expect anything like this to happen. Okay? Thousand year peace. Okay? Thousand year peace. And they're coming against the city. But what does God do right away? But fire came down from heaven and devoured them. Okay, this is not going to happen. Um, well, I shouldn't go there right now. Okay, but keep that in mind because I will be talking about also the battle that is going to happen before, or at the end of the wrath of God. Okay, again, I want to just tell you, I know there's a lot of people that have maybe seen my videos I hope I will have more people, new people, seeing these videos, okay? More people that we need to reach with this message, with the Bible, that they need to read. People are assuming, if they're saying that uh, the Gog and Magog war or battle in Ezekiel 38 is about before the wrath of God or whatever, okay? No, we can only pinpoint it by looking at Revelation. And Revelation tells us it's after the thousand year reign. So the beginning of the thousand years is 
God's wrath. Okay, God's wrath. That's what happened. And we can see uh, in uh, Revelation as well, in chapter 16, very clearly, how the God's wrath is progressing. So that's the first thing that will happen during the day of the Lord is God's wrath. Okay? And at the end, you look at Revelation 16. Okay? Revelation 16. Let's go there. Okay? Revelation 16. And I'll tell you the verse. 16. Because it names the battle that happens at the end of the wrath of God. Okay? Before Jesus reigns, he has to destroy his enemies. Okay? So therefore, the wrath of God is needed. I have already talked in my last video about the destruction of Babylon the Great, which also happens during this time, during the wrath of God. I cannot tell you exactly how long the wrath of God is. I'm assuming maybe four years. Okay? Because I believe the rapture will happen on the Feast of Trumpets. Okay? And then between the Feast of Trumpets and um, the, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, okay, that's when the war happens, when God's wrath happens. And then um, at the end of God's wrath, there's going to be judgment, okay? Judgment, Yom Kippur, judgment. So let's go to that. Um, I think I have 16, don't I? Yeah. Okay. Here even says, 19, the great city split into three parts and the cities of the nations collapsed. God remembered Babylon the great and gave her the cup filled with wine of the fury of his wrath. Okay. Of his wrath. And that's in seventeen, uh, in 19. But we will go to 16. Okay? We'll go to 16. And it is the bowl, the sixth bowl, which starts in 12. The sixth bowl was poured out on the great river Euphrates, Euphrates and its waters was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. Those are the ones who will cause this battle that will happen at the end of the wrath of God called Armageddon. Okay, 16. And they gathered the kings together to the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. And Armageddon is the, the, the war that will happen at the end of the wrath of God, just before God establishes or Jesus establishes his kingdom. Okay? And this is what people confuse. Okay? They confuse this Armageddon war with Gog and Magog war, which will be at the end of the millennium. This is called the Armageddon war, and it will look totally different than the war uh, of Gog and Magog. Jesus will destroy his enemies right then and there, okay? They have no, no anything. But what happens to this Armageddon war, okay? He doesn't describe very much here. Now, what Old Testament prophet described the, the, the war, okay? This Armageddon war. It's Ezekiel 14. Let's go there. Let's go there. Ezekiel 14. Um, is it Ezekiel? No, Zechariah, sorry. It's Zechariah. Zechariah 14. Sorry, it's Ezekiel. I get all confused now. No, it's Zechariah 14. That is where that war is described. I will gather all the nations to Jerusalem to fight against it. The city will be captured. This is what happens. This is not, oh, he's going to destroy him by fire. No. The city will be captured. The houses ransacked and the women raped. 
This is what will happen during the wrath of God, before God is finished with his enemies. Okay? This is not Gog and Magog war at all. This is very different. Okay? Um, half of the city will go into exile, but the rest of the people will not be taken from the city. Then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations as he fought against fights on the day of battle. On that day, his feet will stand on Mount, Mount Olive, east of Jerusalem, and the Mount Olive will be split into two from east to west, forming a great valley with half of the mountain moving north and half of them south. You will flee by my mountain, by mountain valley, for it will extend to Azel. You will flee as you fled from the earthquake. And you can continue and continue. Then something very important happens that you need to understand. Okay, listen to this. You will flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Now listen to this. Then the Lord, my God, will come and all the holy ones with him. Who are the holy ones? That's his bride. Why is his bride with him? Okay, why is his bride with him? Because his bride was taken out before the wrath of God started. That's why. Now, why in the world does he say the holy ones are coming with him if the holy ones would not be with him? Okay? Oh, some people say, oh, those are the dead. Those are the dead and the ones that were um, taken out. I don't want to use rapture because people are going to freak out, right? There's a lot of people freaking out when I say rapture. No, that is now 1 Thessalonians 4. When the dead in Christ and the ones that are alive were taken out, okay, and have been hidden in the new Jerusalem during the time of God's wrath, okay? That's just very simple. You can see that in um, Isaiah 26, 19 through 21 again. Now, if you don't look it up, it's your problem if you don't understand it. Because it is easy to understand. It's easy to understand. You're just going to have to read it for yourself. You have to study the Bible for yourself, which a lot of people don't do. They only read stuff that somebody else tells them. Okay? No. You need to do your own study. I say that over and over and over and over. You need to do your own study. Now read Zechariah 14. Read Zechariah 14. This is not the same. Now compare Zechariah to Ezekiel 28. This is not the same battle. Okay? It's not the same battle. Ezekiel is the Gog and Magog War, which happens after the millennium. We saw that in Revelation 20. Okay? This is the battle that happens before the millennium, after the the, during the wrath of God, okay? Now, I know a lot of people use false words, like, for instance, tribulation, okay? No, tribulation doesn't even, yes, there is tribulation, of course, during the wrath of God, but that's not the word that God is using. That's not the word Paul was using. That's not the word John was using, okay? Paul was using tribulation because all saints go through tribulation. All saints. That's tribulation. Tribulation ends with the wrath of God and when the day of the Lord starts. It's very easy. But people are still confused and we need to reach these confused people. Why? Because when you're confused people, you will confu be confused in all other areas as well. And this is a time of absolute confusion, deception, and misleading of people. We don't have very many true Christians left. Okay? We don't. Maybe it's just because we never really had some true Christians because they've been weeded out. Weeded out and weeded out. Okay? 
So now it becomes just very obvious who is really still a true follower of God and who is really a follower of this world system. Okay? Because we've been believing false teachers. Many have believed false teachers. Okay? And so now we're being misled more and more. Okay? And you know what, people? I have said that over and over again. The more you accept lies, the closer your eyes are going to get. Okay? You will be blinded and you will follow what is happening today. We're living in the middle of the end times. Okay? People pray that God, that Jesus will return this fall. People pray every day. It is getting really bad in this world. Very bad. Okay? And if we're confused about prophecy, why would we see what's going on today? Why? We will not see what's going on today. and We will just blindly continue like a bunch of zombies. What is going on today in the world is horrible. Maybe people here in the United States do not see. They can just, okay, not listen to mainstream media and you'll be fine. I see people partying. I see people... Uh, you know, uh, going on vacation. I see people, we had um, a, a river fest, you know, with um, rafting and all that stuff. And there were people in droves. I saw people today, cars after ca cars after car, traffic after traffic. People are celebrating. They don't care. They're not wearing their masks uh, anymore. You know, they're going to festivals. We have uh, a... Um, uh, what is it called? Medieval festival uh, here. People are just going. They, they know they don't care. Some people are vaccinated. Some people are not. And you, if you don't listen to mainstream media, there is nothing wrong. But people go to other countries and see what's going on. They are still unlocked. I just listened today to the new president of Israel. And he is saying that they're going to lock down all unvaccinated people. Okay? But he said, that's all I'm going to have to say. Okay? Find this information. Find the information. There is something wrong. And the same thing is going on in Europe. They're going to do the very same thing very soon here. Matter of fact, the unvaccinated are still going to have to test themselves to death. Okay? Okay? Or else they cannot go to restaurants. They cannot go to some shops. They cannot participate in the same thing that the other people can do. Now, I'm going to let you decide by using the Holy Spirit if that is good or not good. If that is correct or not correct. If that is something God would approve or not approve. Okay, use the Holy Spirit. Okay, use the Holy Spirit. Now, this is a, 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 a channel that talks about the Bible. Okay, it's a channel that talks about the Bible. And so we go by what the Bible tells us, how the Holy Spirit is leading us. Okay, you think about it. But this is what's going on today. We are at the end, people. If it will, if, if Christ is not coming this year and we have to wait another year, okay, another year, people, will we be able to buy or sell if we don't have them? Okay? Or many people in this world, can they buy or sell? Can they have food on the table because they're not going to be uh, having a job? Wake up. What is the Bible saying? Okay. In Revelation 13. These people cannot buy or sell. Okay. Buy or sell. Really buy and sell. If they have the mark of the beast. 
So where was I when I was so rudely interrupted? I guess I was talking about these false teachers and that we need to wake up and really read the Bible. Oh, maybe also I said, hey, please pray that Jesus will come this fall. Maybe that's what I said too. Because I'm not sure if we can, well, we have to. We have to survive another year because I know things are going to get worse. Okay, things are going to get worse. This next year is going to be going to get a lot worse. I mean, wait up until this fall, um, until, um, you know, this next COVID season is coming. I don't know what's going to happen. They're saying by December, um, sometime in December, that they cannot use the PCR test anymore. CDC said that, that they cannot use the PCR test anymore, and they have to come up with a new uh, variety of tests or whatever to diagnose COVID. So I don't know what's going to happen, what their plan is, because I know they always have little sinister plans. So anyways, um, I'm coming to an end. Please read these things again and do your studies. If you're new to my channel, and I hope you are, I pray to God, please pray with me that God uh, will bring the people to this channel that need to hear this message. I just pray that God leads people, uh, opens people's eyes to the truth. Because if they're not even opening their eyes spiritually, they will be misled politically. There is no doubt in my mind that they are going to be misled. Like lambs to the slaughter, they're going to be misled. People, I have a heavy heart because I know what's going on out there and how deceitful this world has become. Very deceitful. Our our democracy is over, okay? I mean, we are lucky we're living here in the United States. You have no idea. I left Germany in, I visited Germany with my family in March, and I knew I would not go back to Germany anymore. Now, of course, I'll go back when things change, but I don't see it changing, and it will not change at all. It's going to get worse and worse. I'll tell you right now, it's going to get really really bad and i i know i have mentioned this guy this seer this german seer um i don't remember what his name is um it doesn't matter but he saw that the next thing that will happen is people going on the streets rioting and that's what's happening in europe Okay, people will wake up, but only small amount of people, but they cannot change. They will not be able to change anything. And then he said, the Russians will stand in front of the door. We are coming close to the end, people. God's wrath is very close. I'm looking out the window. We are having rain right now. Okay, I cannot tell you if it's foggy or if we're just having smoke from all the fires out west. It looks very strange, people. I cannot see very far. Like I said, it looks like fog, but it's not looking like fog. Uh, it has a different color. It is, this world is going crazy, not just politically. I mean, this whole world is going crazy, not just politically but catastrophically, people, catastrophically. Wake up and wake other people up in the process. I know some people are saying, oh, my family is not listening. Yes, if they don't listen, let them go. Let them go. But do you know what? Plant the seed as much as you can. Whenever you have a, a, an opportunity, give them a little bit Okay, so even if they're left behind, people, maybe they will wake up and realize what they have missed. I mean, that's another option. Of course, when once you're left behind, 
your head's going to go off. Okay? They will not be able, I have a feeling they will not be able to force people to get the, okay? But they can cut their heads off if you're not, okay? They can do it, okay? And I that's what the Bible says. The Bible says that your head is going to be cut off if you are not bowing down, bowing down to the beast, which is the political system, bowing down. Now, that's the first part. You don't bow down to the political system, people, okay? That means you don't bow down to that. Then guess what? That's the first part. The head goes off, okay? And if you do bow down to the political system, you're not going to be saved. You're not going to be part of the people that are being taken out, and you're not going to be even a part uh, of the people probably living during the thousand-year reign. Okay? Simple as that. Simple as that. It's not just the mark. The mark will be added later on. First part is you're bowing down to the system. So many people think, again, Oh, my goodness. Let me put another lie in there. They think it's the Sunday law. Sunday law? No, people, it's not the Sunday law. You're bowing down to the system. You understand? The system, the political system. Okay. It's not, you're not bowing down to the Catholic Church of Babylon the Great. You're bowing down to the, to the political system. See, that's another lie that so many people believe. So many people believe that. No, the beast out of the uh, earth is the political system. The beast out of the um, earth is a political system. Okay? Wake up, wake up. I have so many videos. If you are confused and you need more information, look at my videos. I do in-depth studies, but you're going to have to do your own studies. You have to say, I am not going to listen to these false teachers anymore. And you need to go to the Bible and read and only read the Bible until your eyes are opened. Okay? And the Holy Spirit can only open your eyes. Nobody, no commentary, no nothing, okay? Throw it all out. All commentaries, throw them out, okay? Throw them out because they are all false. I'm coming to an end, people. Let the Holy Spirit guide you and try to reach as many people as possible, even if it's one little seed, just one little teeny thing, Oh, I'm waiting for the Lord. Okay? Say these things. Oh, I know I'm not going to live, I mean, not going to be here very long. That's what I sometimes say, you know? Just little hints that these people hopefully wake up. Now, most of the people are lost. Most of the people are lost. We are coming down to a very minute little group. And you're going to have to find maybe people that can support you during this time because the time is going to get harder and harder, okay? It's going to be harder and harder. And stick with your little group. Stay where you are. Prepare where you are, okay? So you can hang, hang in there long enough where you are. And do you know what? If it's time to go and leave, it's time to go, okay? If it's time for us to get our heads cut off, that's the time to get the heads cut off. If it's time to be thrown in jail, it's time to be thrown in jail. We, why would, would we do uh, any better than the first Christians who were persecuted, severely persecuted, or the people during the Middle uh, uh, middle. Uh, the dark ages, okay? Why? We had it good long enough. Now it is time for the end, and we better be prepared for the end. Again, let the Holy Spirit guide you.